Hi everybody, it's Claudia from Create with Claudia. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm really excited today. I'm proud to present my latest quilt for Island Batik. This is my Island Batik Ambassador Project. It's the 12th one of the year. I call it Mum's the Word, and you can see it on the wall behind me. For December, the ambassadors were uh, challenged to, to make an English paper piecing project. And I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm a little bit, I was nervous about that. I've never done English paper piecing before. I've admired it from afar. I love all those hexy shapes. I've seen some just really beautiful detailed projects. So when I thought about it, I, I we had, uh, since, it's the, since it was the December project, we had quite a bit of time to work on it, which was good because I needed that. Um, but I thought about it and I thought, well, I didn't wanna do the traditional hexy. I thought, let me try something different. So this is what I come up, came up with, excuse me. Again, it's called Mum's the Word. It's about 50 by 50, nice wall hanging size. And I'm gonna tell you how I made it. So first off, for the shapes. So the EQ8 block I used was called Rising Star from the Compasses section of their block library. And what I did is I, again, after getting advice from Island Batik ambassadors and on the internet, I looked all over the place trying to figure out what I was gonna do and how to do it. I printed out the block on cardstock paper. I have cardstock paper, I just used white. And then I cut it out with my rotary cutter and my ruler. And it was pretty hard going. I will say that some of the corners are really tight. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put a picture up uh, in the sections so you can see the block that I used. Um, and if you, it, cause the light sort of shines on this white paper, but um, there are a lot of really, really intricate corners here. And that got a little tricky when I was cutting them out with my rotary cutter and my ruler, but I managed at the end I managed and we got all the pieces cut. I did label all of the pieces. So that made it easier to keep track of them because there were quite a few pieces in each, each uh, flower. And, and I used three different colors in each flower. And what I did first is I, uh, cut out a piece of uh, fabric that matched pr uh, with about a quarter inch overhang around all the sides of the shape, folded it over and then glued it with a glue stick so that it would all be stuck together and you'd have one shape. And then when it was all done, I decided what colors my uh, flowers were gonna be, put them all together, put them individual little sacks, little baggies. And then I started stitching and it's all hand stitching. You stitch the pieces together from the back and I found that a little difficult. Uh, I've mentioned in a couple videos before I have some issues with this hand, so I don't do as much hand stitching as I used to. But taking my time, it was no problem. Uh, my biggest problem was those doggone corners. They're really hard and the, all that fabric uh, bunches in. And I found that probably one of the trickiest parts of, of uh, piecing my English paper pieced flowers. Um, and when you look online, some of the pictures, it looks like they're practically seamless. They're absolutely gorgeous. So I probably need to work on my English paper piecing a little bit before I try my next project. So once that was all done, I, I left the paper in the shapes, I set them aside, and then I decided what I was gonna do with the backing. And the backing is just various scraps of Island Batik greens, dark greens, and then the border is some of their various creams. They're from all sorts of uh, collections of fabric. Again, all from my scrap bins. So it, it, those, keep your scraps. They're great for things like this. But I do have to tell you a little story. I have to thank my nephews. They were up here visiting around Halloween and I had everything laid out on the floor. And originally I was gonna, I was gonna lay out all the flowers on the beige background and then have the dark green border. And the youngest nephew was looking at it and we were you know, playing around with the fabric. And he said, what about this? And he moved all the little flowers, the, the paper pieced flowers and put them on the green. And right away it was like a light went off in my head and I said, wow, that looks really good. So thank you to my young nephews. Uh, the older one also helped out. He looked at it and he said, yeah, that looks good. So thank you to them for helping me decide on the design uh, of this quilt. So what I was originally gonna do was do some fancy decorative applique stitch. Uh, around each of the flowers onto the quilt top and then I was gonna quilt on it. And I tried one and that's actually how I ended up ruining the one uh, mum, the one flower block. So I, gave up, so I gave up on that idea and I just pinned them as I, I laid it out. I laid the backing on the, excuse me, the back of it, this green and beige section, I laid that on the floor and then I laid out all of the flowers and I decided finally on a layout. And then I pinned each flower where I wanted it to be. 
and then I started quilting it. Once I got the backing laid down, the batting, and then the top, and then I just did very simple straight line quilting. You can see how it just goes straight down, sort of a vertical quilting on this, nice and easy, and I went right over those flowers. And then I realized that because I hadn't glued the edges down these corners, I still needed to go around each shape. So I just did very easy straight line quilting, nothing fancy, no decorative stitches or anything. And that way I don't worry about it ever coming up or the corners unraveling. For the batting, I have to thank Hobbs Batting. They had given us in our July ambassador box, they gave us a throw size of their Tuscany collection. It's a cotton wool blend. What a wonderful feel that has. It has a real nice drape to it. And it was really easy to machine quilt through, which was really nice. I like that. I used Schmetz needles. I always use Schmetz needles in my machine. And then to quilt this, the thread I used was also from Aurifil. They had given us the, this uh, thread back in the January box, I believe. I used brass number 2975, and it's a gorgeous gold. It has a little bit of a shimmer to it. And you can see, uh, I don't know if you will, probably can't see it on the camera. I'm gonna show some close-ups too. Just a real nice, adds a real nice warm tone to the quilting on this, uh, this quilt. So I'm gonna quickly take this quilt down off the wall. I just have it pinned up really quickly for my backdrop. Uh, and um, I'll, when I come back, we can do some little close-up shots of it so you get an idea more closely of how I worked on this piece. All right, so here you go. You can see it up close a little bit better. Here's the, the quilt. You can see those points, especially for me, were really, really tough for me to do. Uh, but I managed, I think it looks fine. And then the stitching itself, I did not quilt around each shape. Originally I was gonna do that, but it, I, I messed up that first one so badly and it, I just, I couldn't do anymore. <laughs> it really frustrated me. So, and then you can see that gorgeous brass Aurifil thread quilting. Let me see, you might be able to see it better on a darker. Let's see, there you can see some of it. Just really pretty and adds a real warm tone to this quilt top. And you can see the gorgeous fabrics I use. Let's see, here's another purple one. You can see the stitching a little bit better on that. So I just had a lot of fun with those autumn colors and just had a lot of fun with my mums. Those are my flowers. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how I did that. I'm gonna move this out of the way. So here's my piece of, uh, here is my cardstock where I printed the block on it. And again, this is called Rising Star and it was one of the Electric Quilt 8 compass blocks. And what I did is I, and I'll show you how I did it with the rotary cutters, I cut out and I dis discarded these corner pieces here that made it more like a square. So I just took my rotary cutter and I started, the outside was really easy. <laughs> Um, it's where it got tricky was in here, but with my rotary cutter and my scissors and taking a lot of time, and I'm not gonna lie, there were quite a few mess ups, but um, basically I did this, and be prepared, this is gonna ruin your rotary cutter blade, so have another one so when you need to go cut fabric, uh, you have another one to replace this with. And just watch your fingers, you know, uh, these things are pretty dangerous sometimes. So basically, I just tried to cut on that printed line and then I would cut out my shape. So we're gonna do that. And I'm just gonna do one to show you. And I actually went into, and see how you have, it, it's really easy to go into those other shapes when you're doing it this way. I am sure there are all kinds of ways to do English paper piecing. This is just sort of the way I felt comfortable with. This is by no means the official way or, or the uh, best way to do it. It's just the way I decided to do it. I've even seen you can buy tons of shapes and I thought about doing that, but I, I just, I don't know why, I, I just felt like doing this myself. Um, but yeah, you can buy all kinds of um, uh, pre-cut shapes. There's some beautiful, beautiful stuff out there for English paper piecing. All right, hopefully, oh, that came out. So normally I wouldn't have done it quite so sloppily. I would have taken more time. And then each piece, what I would do is I, I had a master that I labeled the numbers on and then I would number the piece as well. And you have to remember, and I forgot this quite a few times, you have to remember that you're, you have to do it on the opposite side um, because the shapes 
especially some, not this shape so much, but some of my shapes, uh, if you flipped them over, they weren't the right way and it didn't fit. So once I had all those little pieces cut out, and that took a lot of time, believe me, the next thing I did is I found scraps, and I found a scrap that would fit the piece, like so, and then I would leave about a quarter inch on each side, and I just took scissors and trimmed away. I didn't use my rotary cutter or anything. And I just sort of would trim that a little, just to ease up that, uh, that bulk at those corners. And then what I had is one of my fellow ambassador, a couple of them had suggested this, this glue stick by Soline. Uh, boy, did it work perfectly. It had, it, this one's really messy, as you can see. I used it a lot. And then I would just, on the corner, excuse me, on the edge, I just flipped those over and glued them. And then I just went around the whole piece and did that. I will say I had a lot of bulk at that real sharp point. I'm sure there was a way to, to avoid some of that, um, but I know that was, that was one of my issues with this. Uh, but that's how I did it. And so when I was done, I had a little piece. In fact, let me go ahead and just do that really quickly so you can see. I also use a lot of glue. Maybe I used too much, I'm not sure. But there were a couple pieces it was really hard to get that um, those pieces of paper off. There we go. And pretty much like that. And so that piece would have a number on it, like number one, I don't know what number it was for this size, but those I put in a bag and then I, would find, and then once I decided on the colors, I put them all together. And these were my pieces then that I would piece together for my English paper piecing. And that was it. That's how I made all of these individual flowers. Uh, so there you have it. There's a little bit more sort of up close info. Sometimes it's easier to see things when you zoom in on them. But here is my quilt, my December Island Batik Challenge Project, English paper piecing. I call it Mum's the Word. Uh, just was a lot of fun to work on, and I probably will try English paper piecing again. Maybe not such a big piece, but um, I love the little, like I've seen trivet, uh, you know, trivets and um, uh, little table runners. If you check out the other Island Batik ambassadors, they have some gorgeous projects, and not all of them are really big, some are small, just a whole, sort of runs the whole gambit of sizes and styles. I have to thank Island Batik so much for choosing me as one of their 2021 Island Batik ambassadors. What a year it has been and how much fun it has been. I have, um, we did so many beautiful projects. It's been also a really wonderful challenge for me. I've really stepped outside of my box. I English paper piecing, it's the first time I've done it. We made a purse back in, I think it was either August or September, a bag by Annie, gorgeous. And it turned out I did it and that was the first time I had ever made a bag. Thank you also to Hobbs Batting this month, uh, Orifil Thread, and Schmetz Needles. Uh, everything in this quilt is all from them and Island Batik Fabrics. Don't forget, I always love getting uh, comments from you guys. I always love hearing from you what you think about these projects, that sort of thing, questions you might have. I try to answer them as quickly as possible. Sometimes I'm better than others. And make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell. That way you always get notified when I post up a new video. I try to post weekly, although I'm not always successful, especially depending on the time of year, if it's busier or not. And sometimes I post more than one a week. So yeah, the best way to follow me is to, to subscribe and that way you keep up to date. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.